Hi, my name is John Ma, and I'd like to welcome you to Carmen's Road Safety Message. I've been taking Carmen's Road Safety Message to secondary colleges around Australia and New Zealand for the past 17 years. And in that time, more than 150,000 students have heard how the roads impacted our family. And each and every one of you here today to get to school took a risk. You took your lives in your hands to come to school today. And you did that out there on the roads. So my destina destination was to be this cricket function. Instead, I went to a car crash. And I actually went to my car crash. And you'd taken our car to church. So I borrowed Michelle, my eldest daughter's car. The bottom one. As I was going into Axdale, I was in the 80 kilometre zone, slowing towards 60. I saw a four wheel drive coming to, out of the 60 kilometre zone, accelerating a little bit, maybe got to 65 to 70. I noticed it lose control, so I stopped. I came to a complete stop on the highway. The four wheel drive looked like it was going into the, into the trees on my side of the road. Instead, it swerved back and it rolled, bounced up in the air, and it bounced so high, I lost complete sight of it above the roof line of my car. And as you can see, it's landed upside down on the roof and bonnet of my car. So the result of the car crash was that there was one death. I was really seriously injured, and I can tell all of you that my life, my family's lives, and the lives of so many of our friends were changed forever from that day onwards. So four months after the car crash, here I am without a job. What do you think of a car crash now? Emma's been killed in my car crash. I'm seriously injured in my car crash. I'm in counselling. I'm walking up and down in a hydro pool for five months to try and get my body going again. And I've now lost my job. I'm telling you, a car crash is not just a car crash. But you know, don't you, this will never happen to you. Of course not. And yet, on Saturday the 18th of November 1995, just two and a half years after I had my car crash, which so dramatically changed our lives and in which Emma lost her life, Carmen, my baby girl, was killed in a car crash. How could Carmen be killed in a car crash? Do you remember Carmen? When Carmen was born, we thought we were having a boy. We didn't have a boy. We were so fortunate. We had Carmen instead. We had this magnificent, fantastic daughter. But we only had Carmen for 18 years and three months. 18 years and three months, guys. And it's not fair. It is not fair. I'm now going to tell all of you about that morning. And can you guys believe that at seven minutes past eight, seven minutes past eight on a magnificent Saturday morning, my little girl could go to sleep at the wheel at 100 kilometres an hour. And she ran off the road and hit this tree and she's killed herself on us. Carmen went to sleep at the wheel and killed herself and took her life away from us forever. Fatigue is a killer. I heard a car come up Hawkins Lane. I looked up expecting to see Carmen drive in the driveway. Instead, I saw something that I sincerely and truthfully hope that none of your parents ever ever, ever see this. I saw a police car drive in my driveway. Now this so far has been all about my family and what's happened to my family. This next part of the presentation, guys, is all about you and your family. This is what I want you to do next. I want all of you to fix your eyes on me. Now I want you to replace me. This is now no longer John Ma standing here. This is actually your dad standing up here. Or this could be your mum standing up here. And this is what they will have to do next. 
I know they will because this is exactly what I had to do next. I had to leave Ange and Michelle and Jasmine at the kitchen table and go to the phone because Katrina, my second eldest daughter, was working in Sydney. She was 21 years old. She was the assistant manager of the second largest Bets and Bets shoe store in Australia, doing really well in her job. I rang the manager and told him what I had to tell Trina and asked him if he could be around when I told her. Katrina came to the phone and she's like all of my kids and all of us just really happy. She's answered the phone and she said, Dad, fancy you ringing me on a Saturday morning. I didn't even want to come to work today, Dad. This is sensational. You've made my day. I said, Trina, I've got some really, really bad news to tell you. Trina, I'm really sorry, but there's been a car accident. And Trina, it's Carmen. And Trina, Carmen is dead. Your dad or your mum has just made that phone call about you to your brother or your sister. What have you done to them? I can tell you because this is what I heard on the other end of the phone. Katrina saying, no dad, no dad, no dad, no dad, not Carmen dad, no dad, no. And then she's dropped the phone and I could hear her in this Bets and Bets shoe store in Sydney screaming at the top of her voice, Carmen, 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 Carmen. You need to be incredibly vigilant. This absolutely changed our lives, absolutely. But this is a family's worst nightmare. And I'm here, and I'm only the spokesperson, because you are hearing directly from Carmen here. And Carmen is saying to all of you, please, 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 don't do this to your family. You cannot do this to your family. I have a real treat for everyone. I would now really love to introduce you to my little girl. This was taken just 23 months before we lost Carmen on Christmas Day. Here's Carmen. Good evening, and I'm Carmen Ma for the second edition of the 10 o'clock news. Okay, now, uh, as you can see, we are in the Ma, in the Ma house at Christmas dinner. We can't tell Carmen how much we love her. And this message is through me from Carmen directly to all of you. And Carmen is saying to all of you here today, the very second that you get home from school, you go straight to your mum, give your mum the biggest cuddle you've ever given her in your life. And you tell mum what she means to you. Tell her how much you love her. And tell her that you now understand how important you are in her life and you know how important she is in your life. The second you see your dad today, this isn't handshake day for dads. This is give your dad a cuddle day. And guys, I want to thank you so much for allowing me and my family, and in particular for allowing Carmen into your lives here today, and please become great drivers on the roads. Look after yourselves and look after all of your mates. Become a leader. Thank you so much. I'm really pleased to be here with Paul Closey from St Joseph's College in Geelong. And this college has been a wonderful supporter of, of Carmen's road safety message. And Paul, what do you believe that your students get out of Carmen's message? Well, John, I think um, the main message that they get and the most important thing about having you here is that they get a real-life example of how their decisions and how the decisions of, of people and young people particularly around driving and when they drive and how they drive, how that affects their family, extended family and friends. Uh, I think Carmen's message impacted me because uh, it made me realise that road safety is a much bigger di issue than what we see. Um, the part that hit me was when you told me Carmen was the lucky one. It wasn't everyone else in her family, it was the people who got to struggle and she sort of just didn't have to experience that. Well, it really hit home that life's uh, so precious and you don't want to throw it away. And we're constantly reminded of road safety, but until you hear 
um, the effects on uh, family members that it's uh, just really not worth it. Hit me emotionally and really made me think that you know you never know when your numbers up and it's important to take care of your life and uh, take care of your family as well and let them know that they're important to you. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We need you guys to become great. Become great on the roads for us, please.